to us. And that's why we have a Bible, is so that God can tell us what God expects of us. And uh, God speaks to his people. <clears throat> Jesus being our Lord and Savior, we need to know all that he wants to tell us, don't we? And so we can find that a lot of times in the Bible. I heard people say, I've taken my Bible and I've opened it up and right there was an answer to a question that I had. God spoke through that open word. This is the word of God and God would not have allowed anything to be in the Bible unless he would approve that as being his word. I want you to turn to John's Gospel, the first chapter. We're going to look at some scripture and allow that scripture to speak to us. Jesus speaks to us. Jesus said, I tell you the truth. I am the truth. I am the way. I am the life. No man cometh unto the Father except through me. Now, he didn't say that in this particular scripture we're going to read, but that's also in his word, and there's no other way. Jesus has said many things about sin, and he has called sin, sin. And there's no way around it. God hates sin. God loves you. But God hates sin. God wants us to live a righteous, holy life. The Bible says, be ye holy as I am holy. And so that takes us striving to be like God in that respect. We're going to open this service this morning, beginning with verse 29 of that text. But we're going to pray for this box of names before we begin our service. So pray with me, will you? Our gracious Heavenly Father, we do thank you this morning that you've given us this opportunity once again to come together <clears throat> that we might worship you, that we might feel your presence, that we might listen to your voice, talk to us. Lord, we thank you for each one that's here in this service this morning, for we know you made it possible for each one of us to be here. We know, Lord, that these are struggling times. We know that there are many who are sick and hurting. <clears throat> there are so many other reasons that's keeping people from church and from worship. And Lord, we just pray that you'll be with them this morning. <clears throat> we would ask, <clears throat> excuse me, we would ask that you be with this box of names every prayer request that's in that box. Lord, we know that you know each and every need as well as you know each and every prayer request that's in this box. We know that you've already answered the several of those. <clears throat> Maybe some that we're not aware of, Lord, and we just thank you for this box of names, this prayer request that we can pray. Every time that we pray, we can pray for that box of names. Lord, we have <clears throat> prayer on Wednesday night and we have a list of prayers. <clears throat> In the Sunday school class, Lord, there is a list of prayers. We know, Lord, that you know each need. And we just ask that you would answer those needs as you see fit. Knowing that you'll take care of all the needs that surround us. Lord, now we ask your blessings upon your word. May it speak to our hearts. May we go forth to be the witness that you would have us to be, <clears throat> that others might come to see Christ as their Savior, living their lives for him. Lord, we thank you for the dedication of those here in this church. Those that come every time the door is open. Those that take part in the work that's here to keep this church going. Well, we just 
pray for your guidance in your direction in all things. For it's in Jesus' name we ask all of this and for his sake. Amen. <coughs> you have to excuse me, I have to get <coughs> see if I can get, keep my throat clear. Okay. John, first John, not first John, John, the first chapter, beginning with verse 29. So follow along as we read this, and remember, Jesus speaks to us about sin. The next day, Jesus, or John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. I'll read that again. Behold, John said, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who is preferred before me, for he was before me. I did not know him, but that he should be revealed to Israel. Therefore I came baptizing with water. And John bore witness, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and he remained, and he remained upon him. I did not know him, but he who sent me I think this is the important part. He who sent me to baptize with water said to me, Upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. Okay, do you get all the connections in that scripture? Jesus telling us about sin. God has already planned it. Who was to come into the world to take away the sins of the world? His only begotten Son, whom He gave to take all the sins of the world on the cross and die to those sins. Your sins and my sins. God took them all away with Jesus. And, and he also, God also chose John to come and let everyone know this is that person. This is the one. The dove lighting upon him and remaining so John said, he is the one that was even before me. But God called me to come crying out of the wilderness that this is the Son of God. And that's what John says here. And I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. This is the Messiah. This is the Savior that you've all been looking for. This is the one that has come to take away the sins of the world. You can't get the truth any plainer than that, can you? And Jesus said, I am the truth. You all have seen and heard about the ABCs of salvation. Well, it's right there in that particular scripture. Only one except Jesus as God's Son. That's what John did, didn't he? He said, this is the Son of God. So Jesus became our example. We must be like Jesus. We must be baptized like Jesus was baptized. John baptized Jesus in the river Jordan. <clears throat> John said, Rather than me baptizing you, Jesus, you need to baptize me. Jesus said, it must 
must be so, for this is what God has called upon for it to be. We must follow him. We must follow Jesus as the example. So as he was baptized, we need to be baptized. The Bible says, be that, be, for you to be saved, you must believe and be baptized. Baptism is not necessary for salvation, but believing is. And if you believe in Jesus as the Son of God, you will want to be baptized. Simple as that. The second part, or the B in the ABCs of salvation, is believe he is God's Son. That's the important part. Believing that Jesus is real and that he is God's Son who came to take away the sins of the world. Your sins and my sins. Jesus for those sins to the cross. And we need to always remember the cross because of it. The blood that Jesus shed upon the cross. There's a song that goes, What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I uh, We saw something on Facebook the other day. We'll, we'll watch Facebook a lot of it during the week, you know. We saw something on Facebook that a fellow that we knew put on there that maybe we ought to sing a lot of these old hymns like this one here and a lot of other ones because there is a message there that this young generation needs to hear about and know. Rather than singing all the pop songs that we hear today, I was just thinking about that. And uh, I don't know if you listen to the radio much and music, but if you go to have an MRI and they ask if you'd like to listen to music, and then they ask you, what kind of music would you like to listen to? I forget to say religious music, I always say country, because that's what we listen to a lot. And I got to thinking about that, you know, all the country music, how many good Christian old-fashioned songs do you hear on the radio? It seems to me like if you're a Christian, we ought to hear more of it all we know. Such as this one, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Maybe we ought to sing that one a few times. In John, uh, the, the first chapter, uh, if you'll notice in verse 35, the scripture goes on and says, Again, the next day, John stood with two of his disciples, and looking at Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. So John is bearing witness that Jesus is the Son of God. But he also had two uh, of his disciples with him. Now, one of those disciples was Nathaniel. No, Andrew. I'm sorry. One was Andrew. He doesn't list who the other one was, but the writer seems to think that it could have been John who wrote this book of John. And so nothing much is made, but we fall back to one of those disciples as being Andrew. Now, you know, Andrew was Simon Peter's brother. And what did Andrew, Andrew do right away? He confessed that this truly was the Messiah that they'd all been searching for. And when John made the, the comment that this is the Son of God, Andrew goes out and gets Simon Peter, his brother, and the scripture says, brings him to Jesus brings him to Jesus. If we have a brother or a sister or mother or father whoever is out there and you sometimes hear the question, who is my brother? We are our brother's keeper 
and who is my brother? We need to go out there and bring him into Jesus. No. And maybe that's what we need to do here. Go get them and bring them in. I think there's a song, something like that, isn't it? Bring them in, bring them in. Okay. Bringing in the wonder, wondering ones to Jesus. Bring the wandering ones to Jesus. The following day, in verse 43, the scripture says, Jesus found Philip. And verse 45 says that Philip found Nathaniel. So it goes on, one and then another, and they keep at it uh, <clears throat> until Peter preaches to the church in the book of Acts. And 3,000 souls were added to the Lord. Notice that Nathaniel had questions for Philip. And in verse 46, he asked Philip, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Questioning the idea, is this really Jesus? Is this really the Christ, the Savior of the world, the one who takes away the sin? And Philip said, come and see. Doesn't that shout something to us? Come and see. Just like we have found him, that Nathaniel said to Philip. We have found him. And even after the question, Philip said, come and see. Maybe that's what we need to shout in this world in which we live today. Come and see. Maybe you'll like it. The word must go out. Jesus knew Nathaniel. The scripture, if you want to read it, says that even while Nathaniel was sitting under the fig tree, that Jesus knew him. We cannot become a Christian. We cannot receive God's salvation unless God calls us. God needs to call a lot of people today. And we need to be praying towards that end. God loves you. He wants to save you. He calls you. Come and see Remember the chosen story uh, and in John the fifth chapter in verse six talks about a, a man that Jesus says, I must go to this particular place and see a man. And I can I can remember that part of the film real well. And it's here in the scripture that this man was lying, trying to get down into the pool of healing waters once it was stirred up. And every time that he tried to crawl and get into the water, somebody would step in front of him. So Jesus found that man that day, and I don't know how many times he had tried to get into the healing water. What was the question that Jesus asked him? Do you want to be healed? you want to be healed. That's like saying to the world today, do you want to be free from sin? The man said that every time that he wanted to get into the well, he could not. And Jesus said, rise, take up your bed, and walk. And the man was healed immediately. His sins had been washed away. So that's all it takes today is for us to recognize that Jesus is the Son of God, the one who takes away my sins. We must rise and walk. That's also an instance of the baptismal waters, isn't it? We are buried with him in baptism risen to walk a new life. Now you know the rest of that story. 
how Jesus left this man after he had told him to rise up and walk, and all of those who were trying to uh, capture Jesus asked who it was that healed him. The man said, I don't know who he was. But a little later, Jesus saw him and said, were you not healed at that important moment? The man went back and said, it was Jesus who healed him. You see, Jesus makes us new and able to walk. Jesus takes away our sin. If you're here this morning in this service, and Jesus may have spoken to you, saying, rise and walk. Come and see. Come and see. Before it's too late. We do not know what tomorrow may hold, but today might be your day to respond to God. Let us pray. Lord, we do thank you for your word. We do thank you for your salvation. We thank you for Jesus and that he took our sins upon the cross. Lord, help us to realize what our life would be without Christ. That we might do as he commands rise, walk, come and see. Your blessings upon each one here today. Your blessings upon your word, for you have said your word will not, as it goes out, will not come back void. Lord, we pray for those that are lost without Jesus. We pray for those, Lord, that know him as Lord and Savior of their life. All of this in your precious name. In the name of Jesus. Amen. If you're here this morning as we stand to sing our invitation here. The Lord has spoken to you haven't really accepted him as your Savior. You can do that by simply coming forward. Hymn number 300 without him.
Father, again, we just thank you for being able to come together to worship you. And again, we thank you for each one that's here this morning. And Father, we just thank you once again for the message that we've heard that we can use in our day-to-day lives. And we just ask now, Father, as each go with different ways, just watch over and keep them safe. And we just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Baptism is not necessary for salvation, but believing is. And if you believe in Jesus as the Son of God, you will want to be baptized. Simple as that. The second part, or the B in the ABCs of salvation, is believe He is God's Son. That's the important part. Believing that Jesus is real and that he is God's son who came to take away the sins of the world. 
your sins and my sins. Jesus bore those sins to the cross. And we need to always remember the cross because of it. The blood that Jesus shed upon the cross. There's a song that goes, What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I, uh, we saw something on Facebook the other day. We'll, we'll watch Facebook quite a bit during the week, you know. And we saw something on Facebook that a fellow that we knew put on there that maybe we ought to sing a lot of these old hymns like this one here and uh, a lot of other ones because there's a message there that this young generation needs to hear about and know. Rather than singing all the pop songs that we hear today, I was just thinking about that. And uh, I don't know if you listen to the radio much and music, but if you go to have an MRI, they, they ask you if you'd like to listen to music, and then they ask you, what kind of music would you like to listen to? I forget to say religious music. I always say country, because that's what we listen to a lot. And I got to thinking about that. You know, all the country music, how many good Christian old-fashioned songs do you hear on the radio? It seems to me like if you're a Christian, we ought to hear more of it all the time. Such as this one, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Maybe we ought to sing that one a few times. In John, uh, the, the first chapter, uh, if you'll notice in verse 35, the scripture goes on and says, Again the next day, John stood with two of his disciples, and looking at Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. So John is bearing witness that Jesus is the Son of God. But he also had two uh, of his disciples with him. Now, one of those disciples was Nathaniel. No, Andrew. I'm sorry. One was Andrew. It doesn't list who the other one was, but the writer seems to think that it could have been John who wrote this book of John. And so nothing much is made, but we fall back to one of those disciples as being Andrew. Now, you know, Andrew was Simon Peter's brother. And what did Andrew, Andrew do right away? He confessed that this truly was the Messiah that they'd all been searching for. And when John made the, the comment that this is the Son of God, Andrew goes out and gets Simon Peter, his brother, and the scripture says, brings him to Jesus. Brings him to Jesus. If we have a brother or a sister, a mother or father, whoever is out there, and you sometimes hear the question, who is my brother? We are our brother's keeper. And who is my brother? We need to go out there and bring him into Jesus. Don't we? And maybe that's what we need to do here. Go get them and bring them in. I think there's a song Something like that, is it? Bring them in, bring them in. Okay. Bringing in the wonder, wondering ones to Jesus. Bring the wondering ones to Jesus. The following day, in verse 43, the scripture says, Jesus found Philip. And verse 45 says that Philip found Nathaniel. So it goes on, one and then another, and they keep at it uh, <clears throat> until Peter preaches to the church in the book of Acts, and 3,000 souls were added to the Lord. Notice that Nathaniel had questions for Philip. And in verse 46, 
6. He asked Philip, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Questioning the idea, is this really Jesus? Is this really the Christ, the Savior of the world, the one who takes away the sin? And Philip said, come and see. Doesn't that shout something to us? Come and see. Just like we have found him, that Nathaniel said to Philip. We have found him. And even after the questions, Philip said, come and see. Maybe that's what we need to shout in this world in which we live today. Come and see. Maybe you'll like it. The word must go out. Jesus knew Nathaniel. The scripture, if you go on and read it, says that even while Nathaniel was sitting under the fig tree, that Jesus knew him. We cannot become a Christian. We cannot receive God's salvation unless God calls us. God needs to call a lot of people today. And we need to be praying towards that end. God loves you. He wants to save you. He calls you. Come and see. Remember the chosen story uh, and in John the fifth chapter in verse six talks about a, a man that Jesus said, I must go to this particular place and see a man. And I can, I can remember that part of the film real well. And it's here in the scripture that this man was lying trying to get down into the pool of healing waters once it was stirred up. And every time that he tried to crawl and get into the water, somebody would step in front of him. So Jesus found that man that day, and I don't know how many times he had tried to get into the healing water. What was the question that Jesus asked him? Do you want to be healed? Do you want to be healed? That's like saying to the world today, do you want to be free from sin? man said that every time that he wanted to get into the well, he could not. And Jesus said, rise, take up your bed, and walk. And the man was healed immediately. His sins had been washed away. So that's all it takes today is for us to recognize that Jesus is the Son of God, the one who takes away my sin. We must rise and walk. That's also an instance of the baptismal waters, isn't it? We are buried with him in baptism, risen to walk a new life. Now you know the rest of that story, how Jesus left this man after he had told him to rise up and walk and all of those who were trying to uh, capture Jesus asked who it was that healed him. The man said, I don't know who he was. But a little later Jesus saw him and said, were you not healed at that important moment? The man went back and said, it was Jesus who healed him. You see, Jesus makes us new and able to walk. Jesus takes away our sin. If you're here this morning in this service, and Jesus may have spoken to you, saying, rise and walk. Come and see. Come and see. Before it's too late. We do not know what tomorrow may hold. 
But today might be your day to respond to God. Let us pray. Lord, we do thank you for your word. We do thank you for your salvation. We thank you for Jesus and that he took our sins upon the cross. Lord, help us to realize what our life would be without Christ. That we might do as he commands, rise, walk, come and see. Your blessings upon each one here today. Your blessings upon your word, for you have said your word will not as it goes out, will not come back void. Lord, we pray for those that are lost without Jesus. We pray for those, Lord, that know Him as Lord and Savior of their life. 